Welcome to the first installment of the Warfare Research Series. Our goal is to conduct tests in order to add data points to an ongoing discussion about arms versus armor in the historical, in the ancient setting. So um, we hope you enjoy this and that you find it educational. And if you'd like to see more in this series, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Now, without further ado, let's begin the tests. We are in the lovely indoor facilities of Ohlone Archery. Ohlone Archery is an archery club located in San Leandro, California. This is in the East Bay District of the San Francisco Bay Area. It's a great facility, and if you have a chance to join, please do. So today we'll be testing Chinese-style lamellar. The design and stitching is modeled after a museum piece. I have it mounted over a Reinhardt rhino block insert. You know, it's a bit rounded, so it sort of simulates a torso or a leg in terms of the shape. Uh, in between the core and the armor, I have a layer of towel to simulate clothing. I've suspended the armor um, at the top so that it's a little tight on this row. And then I have a couple of weights on the side to ensure that the armor is hanging down and that the orientation of the plates is relatively straight. So we'll take a closer look at the setup. Um, the lacing for the lamellar is leather. And then the plates themselves are actually made of spring steel. So this is probably going to be harder than what you'll find for most ancient armors. But it's a good test. You know, it's a good benchmark to have. Um, just a view from this angle, what the orientation of the plates will be like. Just so that there isn't anything going in between the gaps. One. This is in a aluminum carbon arrow here, and that weighs 1172. That will be the lightest arrow that we test today, just as a standard field point. And that one weighs 1273. And this is using a kind of a, a bullet shaped point. Weighs 1300 grains. This is a wooden arrow with an armor-piercing point, a rhomboid-shaped point. From the Valley of the Knock to the bow hand anchor here is about 28 and 7 eighths inches. Uh, but when I draw it and I touch it, it's actually going to be about 28 and a quarter inches from the back of the bow. So the bow in question is going to be a Tehran made by Miska Rochinen from Serbia of MR Bows. So we want to be scientific about things, and it's not enough to just say that we're shooting arrows out of an X-pound bow. So what we're actually going to do is measure the speed of each of the arrows shot so that we can calculate the kinetic energy and the momentum that is behind each of these arrows. That's a more uniform standard to be able to compare the output of a bow. Okay, so that was a pretty clear deflection there with the lightest arrow. This is the spot of impact. Um, there's just a slight indentation there at the most. I'll mark that just for reference. Slightly deformed on the tip. Um, the shaft may or may not be bent, so I'll have to double check that. Okay. So there is some sort of permanent bend and deflection of the arrow. Okay, 
Okay, so my aim was a bit off there. Um, looks like it deflected to the left in between the plates, catching this, uh, ripping some of the cord here. And, uh, well, let's uh, take a look, see if there's any... Doesn't look like it penetrated the the core itself. Ah, oh, there we go, yeah. Kind of deflected to the side. Um, as for the arrow itself, looks like it became kind of bent at the tip here. Okay, so this actually penetrated into the core. There's a caveat though, I actually previously hit this plate, as you can see by this uh, silver mark circle right here. Um, but if we take a closer look, there's actually a tear in the plate over here. And um, let me see if I can actually pull this one out. Actually, do you mind holding this? I'm gonna pull this out, see what it looks like. Okay, watch out. Maybe want to back up a little bit just so that. There. Um, yeah, so that, that pretty much tore the bottom half of that plate. The arrow is a little chewed up. But I think I could probably reuse it. So there's the damage right here. Yeah, so this one basically struck one of the stitches here, knocking it out and deforming uh, that particular plate. I'm gonna mark this here. But it looks like this person would survive that shot. Here's what happened to the arrowhead in question. Okay, uh, not to get anyone's hopes up, but I hit that same plate again for the third time, so um, that doesn't really count as a kind of bona fide hit. It did mess up some lacing, but that's about it. Okay, unfortunately I bent the tip on that last um, wooden war arrow, so I'm going to try weighing this one now. We'll recalibrate. This one weighs about uh, 1355 grains. All right, let's examine the damage here. Um, uh, this is pretty much done. It seems to have split at the shaft. Here's the fletching segment. 
of the arrow. And let's see, where did it hit? Can't even tell. I'll have to review the film. Oh, that one, huh? Very interesting. Okay. All right, so Caesar just mentioned that the Tang Dynasty exam for armor piercing actually took place at 30 meters. Now, while I don't have access to a 30 meter facility, this facility can actually go up to 20 yards. So we'll see what happens when we try shooting at it from this distance. Okay, it looks like I struck this part of the armor right here, just around this area. And um, yeah, it looks, it knocked the lace off, but it didn't get any further penetration than that. Okay, this arrow struck the lower part um, around this lace right here, kind of unlacing it, but otherwise not achieving any penetration. So, uh, looks just my luck, I struck one of the plates that I previously struck. Um, it kind of deflected in and penetrated through here. I don't know if it slid under the plate here or not, but let's take a look. Looks like it just sort of slid under the plates, not striking any of the plates in the back row. Okay. Um, and the arrow itself looks like it's got a little bit of a bent tip. Okay, what we have here is a impact on this part of the plate. Right here, there's a little bit of a crack um, here and here, but no outright penetration. So once again, thanks to Cathay Armory, run by Caesar Zhang, for setting us up with this Chinese lamellar piece. Um, I'd say overall it fared pretty well. Uh, the arrows that we shot at it had a kinetic energy of between 109 and 114 joules. The momentum was 4.1 to 4.4 newton seconds. And yeah, it just pretty much bounced away what, uh, what I shot at it today anyway. And one thing I will note though is that if you manage to hit the armor in this direction where there's like a slight exposed a gap, then you may stand a chance of actually 
deflecting and having the arrow wiggle through that gap. That was the case for the hits that happened here um, as well as up here. But if you manage to hit it in that direction, then um, you're not going to have much luck because you're going to have deflection there. So, yeah, overall, I'm just very impressed. All right, so for my portion of the test, I'll also be using a Tehran from MR Bose. I have a really long draw length at about 35 inches, so I have a monster version. So first I'll be measuring out the arrows to see how much they weigh. I'll be using a carbon arrows and some wood arrows with two variations of tips on the wood arrows. Uh, so after that, we'll chrono them, and then from there, we'll uh, get to the fun stuff. Thanks for watching. So today I'll be using three different kinds of arrows for the test. Uh, one is carbon with your typical bullet type field point. The other two are wood and they're largely the same except for their points which are just two variations on a piercing type point. So first let's weigh the carbon. All right, the carbon comes in at about 1258.6. And these woods are roughly the same grains, so we'll just weigh one of them. And the wood comes in at 1356.2. Now, this has a bow hand anchor that is 35 inches from the valley of the knock to where it'll be hitting my bow hand. The wood arrows are just slightly shorter due to their build, so they'll come in a few pounds lower than the carbon. Alright, so uh, close up of the target, I have uh, essentially the same exact setup uh, as Justin had for his test, tried to mimic it the best I could. So I have the uh, same core uh, insert, Reinhardt insert that he had. Uh, I have that bungee to a hard foam block to kind of provide the same resistance. I have marked in yellow any place that Justin hit for his test, so that could be a hole, a dent, or even a, a thread that has been cut. So we can examine kind of in minute detail, uh, you know, where I hit versus where he hit.
hit right here. Got another little dent here, little mark. And it looks like it undid this leather lacing. So the plate kind of popped out here a little bit. Nice little ridge there. So we'll go ahead and mark that. really bang this guy up now this might have had a slight bend in it from one of Justin's shots but it also kind of completely came untethered here pretty significant bend kind of leaving this area open from the side so let's go ahead and mark that take our next one All right, looks like we have our first penetration. Not a great shot for me, but not a great shot for this soldier either, as it has now gone straight through these two big bends that I think Justin started and I aggravated here. You can see the tape from the last shot. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and mark it with my fingers here to see how far it penetrated into the, into the core. Alright, so looks like about that much penetration through the towel and into the foam. So it, it probably didn't have much resistance at all from the plates, it just split right through and kind of dug in almost unhindered. Alright, so our first wood arrow from 10 yards, you can see some nice damage there. So the artificial sinew came off, exposed some of the wood, looks like it has a bend in the tip. So it looks like it really jostled these here, maybe undid this leather, scraped across, kind of ricocheted up and in through the towel here. I don't think it did much damage, if any, to the actual foam. So I think mostly a, a blunt force impact here. Alright, so it looks like we sent a plate flying here. This one was from the top row. So if we come on in here, the arrow struck here, put a nice dent, and then I think then it just sent an untethered plate. Maybe even broke it off completely just from the uh, impact. It must have kind of vibrated up, and you see this is completely sheared off. Now, it was already damaged from one of Justin's arrows, but now we have a big exposed spot up there. Alright, so it looks like with this one, it pretty much hit the whole and the leather runs through almost dead on. You can see some scarring there, and of course it untethered it there as well, cut it. You can see the point is bent, quite blunted. Alright, so our shot from 20, looks like it entered kind of just between these plates, untethered them, maybe bent this a teeny here and pushed them, 
pushed them apart. All right, so here's my 30 yard shot. Hit right here where the leather threads through. Untethered this, I believe. I'm not sure if this was already. Put a little dent, a teeny bit of scarring there. I think after uh, Justin and I landed our shots, this armor is in for some repair before the next outing to the battlefield. Pretty pieced up here, but it held up uh, very well against some pretty powerful bows. So I think it's a testament to both the armor and the bows. Uh, you know, this was never a competition. We really wanted to see, to the best of our ability, with the, the best kind of modern day uh, replicas that we could find, you know, just how these weapons and uh, armor interacted. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. We're shooting hard armors with arrows moving with a lot of momentum and energy. Boom. Collisions happen, things break, and we have to find ways to replace them. So this episode was self-funded. Uh, you know, we bought the armor, the arrows, and the bows used for this test. Um, but going forward, in order to make it more sustainable, if you, the audience, find these episodes educational and entertaining, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. So we can have the resources, you know, just enough resources to be able to replace arrows, uh, to acquire new types of armors to test against, and perhaps to acquire devices that help us measure other aspects that would be worth uh, measuring in the Warfare Research series. For example, blunt force trauma. So thanks again for watching. Uh, we hope we find you found this worthwhile, and see you next time.